This essay example, as well as thousands of others, is available in text format on our website for free and without registration. Simply Google Ivy Panda Free Essays. Introduction The early national period occurred between 1776 to 1840. During this time, most of the children were taught how to read and write by their parents at home, using a handbook and the Bible as points of reference. Education was mainly about teaching good morals, and the curriculum was based on religion. Since the paper was so expensive, the children wrote in a copybook, and those from wealthy families had the privilege to hire a private tutor. During this period, such pioneers of education as Jefferson and Webster were against the teaching of political and moral values in school, and this led to a slow evolution of the school. Additionally, there was not much difference between private and public institutions of learning, and both these institutions received grants from the government. Moreover, society gave these schools land and financial aid. During this period, the different types of schools included district schools, free school societies, and academies. The academies provided primary education and taught other things such as Latin, Greek, mathematics, and history. This topic has had a significant impact on the current system of education, and for this reason, there is a need to explore it further. In addition, it also enables us to assess the progress that has been made within the education system since early times. This is important as it helps us to appreciate the progress made and those responsible for it. Three Educational Contributions of the Education During the Early National Period There are several educational contributions during the early national period that need to be explored. To start with, this education led to the establishment of academies. These were secondary schools that taught both Latin and English grammar, among other subjects. Secondly, during this period, DeWitt Clinton helped in the establishment of free schools, and this played a significant role in enlarging the system of education. Children from less fortunate families were able to get an education due to the presence of these schools. Thirdly, since the curriculum was based on religion and the primary goal of sending children to school was to enable them to become devoted and religious people, they were taught the importance of such values as honesty and obedience. As a result, they became good students at school and at home and obeyed their teachers. Moreover, they acquired good morals and hence became good citizens. Strength of the Education During the Early National Period one of the strengths of the education of the early national period is that so many people were involved in its establishment. Each of these individuals came up with a particular issue concerning education, and this led to new developments in education. For example, between 1706 and 1790, Benjamin Franklin contributed a lot to this system of education. He initiated the English Academy in 1942. Separately, Thomas Jefferson advocated for the establishment of new public universities and an expansion of the system of education. Moreover, between 1769 and 1828, Clinton organized a free school society that helped children from poor families to get an education. Lastly, Horace and Baynard helped in establishing common schools. Limitation of the Education During the Early National Period one of the limitations of the education of the early national period was that it was gender bias. For instance, boys could be allowed to attend grammar schools and even colleges where they could be taught apprenticeship. On the other hand, girls remained at home and were only taught how to take care of the family and become good housewives. This report on education in the early national period was written and submitted by a student just like you. The Ivy Panda Samples database hosts thousands of works similar to this one on various subjects. Visit ivypanda.com to find what you are looking for.